happened. OK, you use the turn of phrase tidal wave. It might be relevant to the next story. Christmas was cancelled for an awful lot of people in Kent because of flooding. 700 homes inundated, elderly people trapped in their flats because of lifts breaking, and in Yalding, the water just kept rising until it reached well over a metre in the heart of the village. So was everything done that should have been? Sarah Neville reports. The South East bore the brunt of the worst storms for 50 years. For many, Christmas was cancelled. When the rivers Belt, Tees and Medway burst their banks on Christmas Eve, the Kent village of Yalding was devastated. David Cameron arrived three days later to survey the extent of the damage in Yalding and tempers flared. Being on the confluence of three rivers, Yalding is no stranger to flooding. The last flood on this scale was in 2000. But this time, locals say official communication was poor and rescue teams came too late. 2000, we had loads of help. We had uh, the Gurkhas, we had the police, we had the fire brigade, we had buses evacuating people to high ground. Sandbags were delivered to everywhere. This time, there was nothing. People have lost their homes, their cars, everything, and there just wasn't enough warning and there wasn't enough help. For some, the loss seemed too much to bear. I've lost my whole life has gone. I've worked all my life. Everything I've got that was in my home has gone. When we got up Christmas morning, the water level was up to here, um, and it was everything was floating. This man rescued almost 30 people using a neighbour's canoe. He waded through freezing floodwaters for several hours, evacuating stranded locals to safety. And what help did you have from the authorities? None. Um, I asked the parish council um, about sandbags. This was about one o'clock, and uh, I was told that they're on, uh, don't you understand, it's Christmas, they're on leave. There was uh, not a lot of understanding what exactly was happening. So we was all suffering. We've all suffered in this village. This side of the water, more than the other, but we've all suffered, and it's about time that we learnt to pull together, and communication is the key to this. Responding to a situation like this is complicated, involving organisations from the Environment Agency and Emergency Services to councils and the voluntary sector. Since 2011, local authorities have been given more responsibility for identifying flood risk and raising money to defend against flooding. Just this week, the Prime Minister said the government was keen to lever in more council cash for flood defences alongside contributions from private bodies. Now officials are asking questions about what happened at Christmas. Maidstone MP Helen Grant is calling for a multi-agency round table, while next week Kent County Council is to hold a crisis meeting. Clearly at senior management level there were mistakes, for example marine police turning up without boats, um, some people from the environment agency say not checking houses because uh, they said oh there's no lights on, well that was because there, there was no power. And then of course uh, Maidstone Borough Council, uh, notorious for being incompetent anyway, um, but it had, uh, it had its um, telephone lines on answer machine. Now the irony is that there were lots of really hard working staff inside working very late at night, but nobody had actually thought at senior management level, oh we better change the answer machine. Uh, message to say that we're not actually closed. There are loads of people just hung up. And so it's those basic things. I think in a, in a crisis, people feel very insecure. They need information. In some cases, it can be a, life, a matter of life and death. And it, it is a miracle nobody died here. All of this comes against a backdrop of cuts to local council budgets and the Environment Agency, which plans to axe 1,500 jobs. The government insists the cuts won't have an impact on provision for frontline flood defences in the future. But Mike Clancy of Prospect, the trade union that represents specialist staff in the Environment Agency, sees things differently. We know they're stretched. People know that. They can see the pictures on television. And if we continue to cut staff and cut assets, then there will be only one consequence. That is more damage to the community and more economic damage as a result of us trying to recover in the aftermath. Communities pulled together 60 years ago when the South East was underwater. And amid all the questions, one thing is for sure. It's happened before, and it'll happen again. And while residents felt lonely this Christmas, will lessons be learnt for the next time?
We're joined now by Paul Carter, Conservative leader of Kent County Council. Paul, picking up on some of the quotes from the residents of Yording in the report, they talked about the emergency response too late, there wasn't enough warnings, we heard that the council phones, Maystone Borough Council phones, were on answer phone. But there is one, and you'll, you'll know this, there is one burning question that the people in Yording want to know is, did the flood really have to be that bad at all? Did something go wrong at the lie flood barrier in Tunbridge? Well, uh, first of all, I mean, enormous sympathy to those uh, victims of the flood that had their homes flooded, particularly those that haven't been able to get flood insurance. I mean, enormous problems mm. there. I mean, generally, I think the whole uh, emergency operation and recovery operation well, has worked very well. Well, let's get on to that well. in a moment, but I really do want to know, because I have heard so many people say we were sacrificed because of the lie flood barrier. Do you know if it worked how it should have worked? Well, we need to look at the uh, evidence uh, from the Environment Agency. I'm told that the Lye Reservoir uh, on Christmas Eve was virtually empty uh, and had filled up by about 4 or 5 o'clock uh, that evening. Uh, and if uh, the flow of water into the uh, reservoir was greater than uh, the water you can get out of it with the floodgates mm. open, um, they've got a very good defence. But let's look at the facts and the figures. But there is a question mark there. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that, but what I'm saying is I've talked to the Environment Agency about it. I'd like to see the evidence of how they manage the lie uh, barrier uh, on Christmas Eve. And, uh, uh, you know, I'll support them to the hilt if they've got the evidence to pr uh, mm. produce uh, that shows that they managed it as okay. sensibly and as intelligently uh, as, as possible. But, you know, generally, I think the emergency and recovery plans went exceptionally well. Well, well really, Maystone Borough Council's Eve. phones were going to, to answer phone. Residents had uh, sandbags turn up on Christmas Day morning. That was too late. The flood warnings went out on Christmas Eve. Most of the houses were already flooded by the time the sandbags well, I mean, arrived. You can see evidence there were some sandbags in Yielding, but with the best will in the world, more sandbags wouldn't have made a lot of difference to most of the houses that uh, uh, I've visited uh, since uh, Christmas Day. Um, we've got to now look at how we can build affordable flood defences uh, that uh, protect Yielding. I think that uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, get together a funding package with a bit of help from national yeah. government. I mean, you know, despite uh, this era of austerity, we were very lucky to get significant money from the coalition government to build the sandwich uh, defences, which Well, let's, 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 much, let's much come needed. back to Yielding. You clearly want a specific flood defence for, for Yielding. The government say they now want to lever in more money from local authorities for flood defences. Can you afford it? Well, I mean, the uh, sandwich defence is being built at the moment, which helped when we had the sea flooding uh, a few weeks before Christmas. Uh, we put in a substantial part, Pfizer's put in a substantial part, and 50% came from national government. Can you government. do it again? Can you afford well, it again? It, I think that we're going to have to look at our capital programme. We're spending £200, £250 million pounds on our capital programme. If government are prepared to get their chequebooks out, yes, and we've got a scheme that we know will protect and work and defend mm. uh, uh, the uh, uh, Yielding village, uh, then it would be good value for money, estimated around £24 million. Pounds. OK. Hold that thought for a second, Paul, because I want to go back to the, what we saw in Yielding there with our guest of the day. Uh, Sarah Owen, you've worked in emergency planning. Yes. Did that look like a good example of a coordinated response to a serious flood? Short answer, no, it did not. And um, what those people there needed, of course, my, I echo Paul's sympathies to the people that have lost their homes and their businesses, but they actually don't need that, and they certainly don't need David Cameron turning up doing a publicity stunt three days later. What they need is proper defence systems in place. Um, you needed David Cameron and I think the Conservatives and the Coalition Government to take responsibility for when you cut £500 million from the department responsible for flooding, that when things go wrong, that the plans won't be in place. OK, just a quick thought on what you saw in the film as well and, and whether it was a good example of a coordinated response. What do you say, Damien? Well, I, I don't think we said that from the film. And as Paul says, I mean, there has to be a proper study of what happened and what the lessons are to be learned. No, but the important thing is investment in the future. What people want to know is, is this going to happen again? We are spending more on flood defences now than the Labour Party was spending. And in the autumn statement, l at the end of last year, the government gave an extra £120 million okay. to go into flood defences as well. So but, people need to know that that the investment is there. expecting local authorities to come up with this when they are being... Uh, the, 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 the their funding is being capped by central government. They're being urged not to put council tax up. Where are they going to find the money to do that? And let me just bring in the point from Sir David King, the government's special envoy on climate change, says the government needs to double its spending on flood defences to a billion pounds a year by 2020. Meanwhile, the Environment Agency's budget is being cut. Well, the Environment Agency is there to deliver the flood defence work. 
they're the primary agency to do that. They've been given more money to do that, more money than the last government spent, and extra money this autumn as well. I think there's a, so that yet the, the investment is going through. Mm -hmm. There's another, if I could finish, there's another key point as well, which is about local coordination. Now, I, for me, in my constituency, coastal flooding is the big concern. There's an excellent group which I work with, with Amber Rudd, the Hastings MP to support, called Defend Our Coast. They work throughout the year with the Environment Agency, with the councils, anticipating the problems, getting local agencies to coordinate throughout the year in anticipation of a problem. And I do think we need to look at that sort of grassroots planning in partnership with the councils and the Environment Agency as well. But it's not just the Environment Agency, Damien. I mean, we're looking at the response times there. People were very critical that you didn't see police, you didn't see the fire service, and those two emergency services that are vital in flooding, well, let's and they've had Paul, their funding Because cuts. you're the lead authority. Yeah. The county council officially is the lead authority responding to a flood. And you've heard the criticisms there. Is it too complicated? No, do we need no, a simpler system? That's not true. On Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, all the emergency services, uh, Kent Fire and Rescue and the police were working and evacuating uh, people from the uh, caravan park uh, as well as uh, other homes and uh, uh, they saved lives alongside uh, the volunteers uh, which were there in numbers and uh, 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 last week I met with St John's Ambulance, the Red Cross, they had an enormous number of volunteers help, and the Salvation Army helping and supporting uh, the evacuation and support process, mm. and I think they did a marvellous job. Okay, well there will be lots of questions in the future about where we build houses, which takes us on to our next issue. Paul Carter, thank you for joining us. Now you may have heard the 